the most important person of the day, Professor Lega Chakot. Over to you, Lega. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, it, it's my privilege and honor to be the part of this panel. And thank you so much for inviting me, uh, you know, a special thanks to Professor Joseph. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's a nostalgic moment for me uh, because I worked with, uh, you know, Govinda uh, around 10 years. And I traveled with him to many countries, including Morocco, uh, two major cities in Morocco, Rabat and Casablanca, uh, to Paris and to, you know, Philippines. Philippines, not only to Manila, but we have taken a ship, a uh, a flight and a bus, I think, in one day, through all the modes of transport, we traveled to a commune in Philippines. And in all these journeys, you know, I have uh, closely watched the way uh, he conducted the meetings at all the tiers of government and the way he has, you know, moved the policy prescriptions at the local level, whether it is regarding a pork barrel funds or whether it is regarding identifying the needs at local level, it was a learning experience for me. And, uh, you know, the biggest takeaway is uh, when you have budget constraints at the local level, what is a kind of fiscal flexibility you can apply at the local level? You know, that was a beautiful learning experience when I traveled with him in all these countries. And that project, uh, you know, was related to gender aware human development as well. So within this masculine perspectives of public finance, how can the soft sectors like gender can be integrated in the public finance? It was a learning experience for me when I traveled with him to all these cities, communes, uh, rural and urban. Uh, so, you know, thank you so much, sir. And I also remember the way we walked after our dinner and the way you have listened to my uh, emotional issues regarding professional or personal, and also the kind of confusions I had and the way you have consoled me. And everything is uh, very much there in my mind. And thank you so much for this book. It's an important contribution, not only for the students and academia, but for the public policy makers. You have begun in our institute an important program for the senior IAS officers on fiscal policy and macroeconomic management. And Panu has uh, been the course director in the preliminary year. Then I have taken it over and ran that program for seven years. And in that program, you know, every policymaker, you know, across country, when they came for the program, they looked for a document like this, what you have produced right now, a document which can they readily refer to regarding the theories, regarding the empirics and the data analysis and the policy prescriptions. So that journey, you know, you have given beautifully in this book. And thank you so much for you know, writing down this book, but certain gaps or certain beautiful discussions you had with us in an IPFP, those discussions, uh, you know, maybe it's another book for you to write uh, regarding the decentralization. And uh, you sent me to the International Institute of Public Finance Conference. There I met Professor Musgrave. I was talking about the fiscal decentralization to him and especially the kind of planning process that's happening, uh, you know, in the context of Kerala, then Musgrave, uh, you know, uh, he shrewdly mentioned that fiscal decentralization is a rightist process. So I was arguing with him uh, regarding the what has happened in my own home state, Kerala, but he was telling that in, the, in this market-oriented decentralization process, it's becoming a rightist process. So, you know, these kinds of exposure you have given me by sending me to various forums uh, and, you know, uh, right now, uh, when I became the part of that organization, I humbly remember the way you have guided me to come up to this position as a member of the governing board of IAPS. And in the book, you know, uh, my uh, co-panelists have focused on many aspects and I don't want to revisit many of them. And they have preempted also many of the questions I have for you. But I would love to highlight certain points. Uh, you know, like uh, Professor Isaac pointed out, what's the relevance of, you know, the institutional reforms like fiscal council right now? Because we are now grappling with very high fiscal deficit and high fiscal, high public debt. And the consolation is that uh, we are keeping the fiscal policy accommodative. 
in the time of pandemic and in the time of geopolitical uncertainties. But as the you know, as we go along, we need to find a medium term fiscal consolidation path. So what it could be, like we will go back to a suffocating 3% in the future, or even including the budget transparency issues by including the off budget liabilities, are we going to settle down to a ratio of 4.5? So these are the concerns I have. Or can we uh, you know, substantiate that, let there be high fiscal deficit or high debt, but use it for reducing the output cap and also for enhancing the public expenditure in infrastructure, because infrastructure crowd in private investment. And in this area, you know, our uh, finance minister also repeatedly pointed out that if it is used for capital infrastructure, let there be high fiscal deficit, don't fear deficit. But at the same time, there is a tendency now in our country to nudge the subnational governments to go ahead in the market to find their fiscal space. But that was not the case so far. So in your book, I was trying to identify what a solution for this. Because earlier, macroeconomic stabilization was the function of center government. But now, the macroeconomic uncertainties the states are equally exposed to. And given the hard budget constraints at the state level, you know, what is the solution for that? Then the center government, not just the state governments, to go ahead with you know, facing the market uncertainties and to find their fiscal space. At the same time, we have the threshold 3%, you know, that rule like a demo, uh, you know, it's a sword uh, in front of us. So I'm a little confused about the statement whether we can boldly say that fiscal deficit is good or deficit is good, not only in the times of pandemic or geopolitical uncertainties, but if you can substantiate the use of deficit then can we uh, you know, get away with the threshold ratios of deficit, which is suffocating the fiscal space at the center and the state governments. And uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Professor D. Narayana mentioned about Albert Breton. And I do remember our discussions about uh, Albert Breton and how he has influenced your thought process and the way you had very healthy debates with him on the competitive federalism and cooperative federalism. And I do remember learning from you the kind of Salmon mechanisms, the Peary Salmon mechanisms you talked about. But in the contemporary uh, Indian economy, in the contemporary Indian public finance, I would love to hear from you the kind of application of you know, the Salmon mechanisms, whether we can benchmark uh, you know, certain jurisdictions or certain best practices and work towards that, or the kind of cooperative federalism mostly we are managing through the intergovernmental fiscal transfers. And I do also remember the kind of debate we had regarding you know, financing human development issues, whether it can be a part of intergovernmental fiscal transfers. And you were uh, very vocal in saying that don't play around with unconditional grants by integrating human development criteria in the formula-based fiscal transfers but you can go ahead with conditional transfers. But with the climate change as a part of, you know, the TOR of the finance commissions, we have gone ahead with incorporating, you know, climate change as a mandate or as a part of unconditional transfers. So I would love to hear the evolution in your thought process regarding complicating, that's the word you use, don't complicate the intergovernmental fiscal transfers you know, it has to be based on offsetting fiscal disabilities, but not more than that. Uh, the primary objective of the IGFT is to offset, uh, you know, fiscal disabilities. We cannot complicate that further with climate change. But, you know, having said that, I also remember your contributions uh, in environmental federalism and, uh, you know, uh, Wallace Oates influenced your thought process regarding uh, you know, taking the fiscal federalism ahead to, you know, environmental federalism. And I know that, uh, I remember that you initiated that project in our institute on environmental federalism. And this year, India is going to produce the first, uh, you know, adaptation communication statement uh, in November, because we have committed to the Glasgow commitments. Uh, you know, given that backdrop, uh, would love to know about your perspectives about you know, the climate change commitments and what's the kind of fiscal instruments 
and the role of environmental federalism in tackling the climate change commitments. Because one clear answer, a transparent answer is to start a climate responsive budgeting statement at the center government and the state levels as a long-term public financial management tool. But you know, beyond that, uh, what it could be, uh, because you know, we have committed uh, to net zero carbon emissions and we have committed to just transition. Uh, so I would love to hear your thoughts about uh, you know, uh, the climate change uh, in, in public finance as well as you know, uh, the kind of, uh, you know, these are the quick points I noted down uh, from, the, from reading the book. And thank you so much for you know, giving this book and not only on the contemporary Indian public finance, but you have taken the theories and you know, the data analysis and the policy prescriptions. It is you know, meticulously done in each of the chapters. And I enjoyed re reading that roving bandit and stationary bandit stories of Olson you have told me in person. You know, uh, I remembered uh, those stories and uh, Thank you so much once again and uh, wish you all, uh, you know, success and peace and happiness. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Lekha. Your tribute to your mentor could not have been better and the appraisal of the book also and the list of questions could not have been longer. Thank you very much.